Feels like a good fish. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a nice one for the start of the morning on the Spro Aruka Shed. Fishing some scattered grass up there and uh, she came out and bumped it first and then just loaded up on it. It was a no doubt then. We'll take that to start off up here in La Crosse at the Riders Conference. Troy Morrow here, FLW Towing Pro, uh, up here in La Crosse, Wisconsin, early fall of the year. Up here for a Riders Conference. Uh, throwing some spro bait. So started the morning out with a spro Aruka shad. Fishing a small point here behind me, um, comes out, it's got some scattered milfoil on it. Um, seems to be a few fish up there. It wasn't a couple casts and caught a good one right off the bat. And we'll see what it has to offer. There's one. Another good one. <laughs> Early hook. <laughs> better, better than to put a hook in your hand. <laughs> so there's a few fish on this little point here. <laughs> We're just gonna bring that one in. <laughs> nice little, little cross Wisconsin fish on the Spro Aruka Shad. Going to Aruka Shad here, uh, great bait for any time of the year, but especially fall of the year. Um, never been here before, so I'm not sure on my color choice. I started with a nice bright one. Um, seems to be working okay out here. What we got is a little point comes out, um, kind of makes a saddle. There's an island a little further out, but uh, there's some milfoil clumps. And I'm um, just kind of, I got it on uh, Sunline Braid, uh, 50 pound test, throwing it up there on those clumps and just kind of feathering it across. And it seems like it'll come off one of those clumps and want to stop it. Hard pulling fish in this river system. <laughs> Benefits of having Gamagatsu hooks. Original one, he hit it from the side, got him in the mouth, came around and caught him again with the second one. Nice little lacrosse bass. I hear throwing a Spro Aruka shad here and some sparse grass on a point. Um, I set up today to throw this lighter bait. Got a 7.3 medium heavy Micro Magic by Duckett. I like that rod because it still has enough backbone to handle bigger fish and drive hooks, but it has enough tip in it to forgive you on uh, when you're fighting them so you don't lose and pull as many hooks out. Um, got it paired with a high speed reel throwing a 360 7.1. Uh, um, you need that high speed reel to manip manipulate that bait across uh, some of the grass and even when you're not hitting any, if you say you're in between clumps of grass, you need to be able to make that bait jump. So I use that reel in combination with that rod to give that action to that bait. Um, throwing it on 50 pound Sunline SX2. I um, mean, smooth, dependable, easy to cast braid. The braid's crucial because you want to be you don't want that stretch when you're trying to rip that bait out of that grass. You want it to come out cleanly and quickly. Throwing crankbaits, uh, rattle baits like this, 
it's not always just a steady retrieve. I always want to be doing something. I want to make my bait look injured, out of control, trying to flee, but do something to it. Don't just steady reel it in all the time. It looks like our bite has slowed down a little bit, so I'm going to lay down the Aruka Shad. And instead of fooling with that with colors and sizes, first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to totally switch to a different type of bait. I'm going to do a shallow diving crankbait. Let's throw a little John. Um, got it in a citrus color. Here's some. See if we can't back in the same school and get one to bite a little bit different action. Switch rods also. I've gone to a, a little bit lighter rod, but. Uh, my technique has changed a little bit. Um, now I'm dealing with a diving bait with a lip. So I don't want to try to rip it out of the grass so much. I want to finesse it across. Um, you go to pulling real hard a lot of times on crankbaits and you're just going to foul hook in the grass. So it's a little bit of a technique change when you're bringing it through. Get it down and you can feel the contact and I'm either using the slow rise of the bait or just a steady pull to bring it across the pieces of grass. And when I'm throwing a little crankbait in the grass, um, I like a fluorocarbon. I'm using a, probably a, let's see, I got a 12 pound test on here. It's a Sunline Sniper. I use that bait for sensitivity. It also sinks to keep my baits down a little bit better. But it allows me to, when I'm finessing it through that grass, to, to really feel what I'm doing without overkill of the braid because it's a much slower presentation. Um, and the fish could get a little more line shy. Now well, we've tried a couple different lures and the school seems to have uh, subsided a little bit here. We haven't had a bite in a while. Keep them honest before we leave out of here looking for more. Uh, got a little drop shot rig rigged up here. Uh, SX1 with a sniper uh, leader. Drop shot and a little uh, fluke stick from Zoom. We'll just see if they're still there. Apparently they're still there. <laughs> Little guy though. Real little guy. Light line drop shot. Catch them anywhere in the country. <laughs> Caught a few fish this morning on the Ruka Shad right off the bat. One really good one. Um, Seemed to slow down a little bit and I noticed where they were holding there's some flooded timber and then there's some milfoil on out in the water but there's like a little empty strip in between. Re-rigging my little drop shot rig here. Um, little last fish got me pretty tangled up but I'm running some SX1 braid um, 20 pound to a fluorocarbon leader, shooter leader 7 pound. Trying out the new Gamagatsu hook that uh, Shin is developing. Uh, it's got a little keeper on it. Uh, seems to be really good so far. It's in the G finesse line. Um, I think it's gonna be a hook that's gonna be a keeper. Rigging a small uh, Zoom Fluke Stick Junior here. Go in on a slight angle because you're, you're using a straight hook and that'll allow your uh, worm to sit on the hook a little straighter. Pull that back up in there to the stopper. And we'll bring it all the way around to just skin hook. Pretty simple little presentation, real lightweight under it. Got a, probably a one foot leader to my weight. Let's see if we can catch another one. I'm almost like flipping with a drop shot. I'm just doing little short pitches to targets in uh, grass areas. They grab it. Some 
healthy fish in this river system. Zoom Ploop Sick Jr. and a drop shot scores another nice bass. Yeah, when I'm drop shotting uh, around the country, especially on tour here, we end up throwing a lot of finesse rigs. Um, I use the SX1 braid by Sunline. I use it in uh, mostly 16 and 20 pound tests, which is a very small diameter. It hardly ever gets a wind knot in it, which is very nice. It allows you to fish a lot more during the day because you're not picking out wind knots off the end of your rod. It's very smooth, a very limp line. It handles well on the spinning rods, get good distance out of it. Um, sometimes I drop to even smaller, to like a 12 pound, if I'm needing to throw a bait a long ways. And uh, just an excellent line by Sunline. Now we were going down through there, uh, throwing a drop shot, but we weren't moving real fast, so I picked up a swim jig to cover a little more water. This is a 3 8 out swim jig by Outcast Tackle. I got it paired with the uh, Zoom Z Crawl Jr. Uh, makes a nice little bluegill imitation. Swimming it through some scattered milfoil, pick one up. All the gear that I was using today, available at Tackle Warehouse. Like, share, tag a friend for your chance to win the free gear giveaway at this week at Tackle Warehouse. The Missile Baits Crawfather right here, it's a little three and a half inch flipping bait. We'll put another one on and catch another one. All those big fish you just saw me catch came on something with squirrel in the name. Mississippi River stud right there. Swimming mama, 1099, 25 pound shooter.